Yeah, Tony, any thought of uh, bunting Max going to that batter, or were you feeling good about his swing? Uh, where was that through this game? Yeah, I think, um, you, you know, the conversation that was had was more about do, do what you think you need to do. I mean, the, the guy's a winner. Um, he certainly, uh, as of about five weeks ago, back to being himself, if we want to beat up that topic uh, that was brought up a lot. Uh, so it was really about him just doing whatever he thought he needed to do to help us win the game. And then Frank, I think, uh, as he does so uh, bluntly, spoke forward, and I think he used some curse words and said he might as well, you know, hit it over the, the bleeping fence or something like that. I think that's how it went down. But, hey, the bottom line is we left it in, you know, the hands of our athlete, and he's, you know, an athlete but also a, a superb kid, and uh, that, that's why he's a winner. Tony, that moment doesn't happen if Pav doesn't – kind of gut through that uh, that pitch and, and loop it out to the center. Just what can you say about his performance today and uh, just kind of dealing what he's had to deal with uh, the last couple of weeks? Yeah, I mean, he was really solid behind the plate and, um, you know, looked like he hadn't skipped a beat, to be honest with you. I mean, first at bat, if I'm not mistaken, line drive. Um, had some good takes in the box, uh, swung the bat well, and, and so – you know, maybe it's because he took his time getting back to that deal. But I, I think he's been salivating for a long time to, to play. And he's been extremely cooperative uh, with the staff, or me in particular, kind of waiting for his name to be in there. And uh, he made his mark on the game. And he made his mark on that ball, too, because I don't know what part of the bat he hit it with. But, uh, you know, the bottom line is he got the early leadoff runner on. And we'll go next. We'll go to Wes. And then we'll go to Joseph or Ryan after that and then Joseph. Tony, I guess it, it might be unfair to say this team still had anything to, to prove to anyone, um, but, but kind of fighting through, you know, that tough loss yesterday, it looks like it's going to go that way again today. I mean, what, what does this team kind of character wise have at this point? I mean, it just seems like that's not the kind of win that a lot of teams get. No, no, it's not at all. Um, but that's the last two nights are staple SEC games. I mean, um, call them inches if you want that separate the two teams or just a small margin. Um, you know, obviously one run would be another way to describe it, but that's what these kids have signed up for. And that's why there's more fans in our league uh, than any other league, because it, it's kind of how it works. It's probably how it'll go tomorrow too. And I don't know that our kids feel like they've had anything to prove, but maybe with the way media works or matchups and things like that, um, our, our guys want to be in a category where they're, they're on the hunt for special things at the end of uh, each year. I mean, you could list them all however you see fit. Um, so, you know, to be in that category, you got to be able to play with the teams in our league that are always able to do that. And, you know, so far we've played teams um, like Florida, Arkansas, Vanderbilt. And uh, the difference has just really been, like I said, the inches. And typically when we don't end up getting the inches in our favor, it's because, we just didn't play fundamental baseball or control our emotions or things like that. It wasn't because of talent or we were completely overmatched um, or anything like that. Um, and when we do win, this team staple, like you said, is kind of character or a little extra grit to it. And, um, you know, you might as well roll with what's working for you. Seems like the better the opponent, the better Will Heflin you get. Just what do you think contributes to that? And then specifically today, what was making him so effective? Yeah, that's fair. And, and um, I also think there's a deal where he's progressing um, as a starting pitcher. Um, you know, we've asked him to do so many dang things since we've been on campus, um, a lot of different roles. And I think now um, most of these kids, you know, they want to show up to the park and know exactly what is expected of them. Unfortunately, this isn't the big leagues. We got to, you know, each game is enormous if you want to, you know, kind of really just state it as is. Uh, but now that he's been you know, kind of slotted into that spot. He's earned it. He's earned the right to be out there with the game on the line later in the game um, to get work his way towards 100 pitches. I think there's that progress too. Um, but yeah, I think when the moment is big or the opponent's great, I think what he does is he, he's, he doesn't go the other way. He maintains composure and, and stays true to who he is. Whereas a lot of kids at a young age, and it's hard to fault them, we'll try and do too much or get too amped up or something like that. So a lot of that comes with his maturity and consistency that we're always preaching about to you guys. How much do you think this walk-off will carry in tomorrow's rubber match? And do you think Blade Tidwell will kind of feed off the energy that you guys brought in the ninth inning today? Yeah. Um, I think Blade Tidwell will feed off that meeting he had with Peyton Manning. 
Um, I know he's a pretty big Tennessee fan, um, and he dang sure didn't say much. He locked up pretty good when when we introduced him to him. But um, in all seriousness, there, there's a good chunk of time between now and the next game. Whereas last night, I mean, I don't think our guys probably got more than nine hours um, away from the park. Um, so it's different now. And, and maybe it worked out well for our club that um, they, they get to enjoy the win a little bit because it was crazy. And whether it bleeds into tomorrow or not, emotionally, uh, that's hard to say. I mean, that's basically saying like our guys wouldn't be ready to hook it up anyway. And Arkansas, regardless if they win or lose, is number one in the country because they show up to the park ready to play every day. So um, I, I don't think it'll it'll carry over much emotionally. I think you're going to have two teams that are ready to play tomorrow. But all the pitches that have taken place in this series so far have something to do with what will go on tomorrow to some extent. I mean, this is a three-round bout. And, um, y- you know, fortunately for us, we've, we've got a chance to, to go into tomorrow and do what everyone's goal is, is to win series. We'll go to Troy and then back to Mike. Tony, you alluded to Max's earlier season struggles. I guess from your perspective, what's been the biggest difference in him in terms of a hitter over the last few weeks? You know, I, I, I've seen it before, and I don't mean to sound like I'm super smart on this topic, but with a lot of those guys, they, they kind of just got to wear themselves out a little bit on that other stuff, on the overthinking and, and things like that, and, and work through that a little bit. Um, you know, kind of like they say, time heals all wounds. Uh, sometimes guys that, you know, are, are outside of themselves or trying to do too much is the famous baseball cliche just got to kind of work through it and you eventually get to a point where you wear yourself out and you say, you know what, it's just time to play baseball. And uh, when Max is just playing baseball, uh, he's one of the better defenders in the conference. Obviously he's a huge threat on the bases and he can handle the bat in a lot of different ways. Mike. Yeah. Tony, when Max hit that, did you think it was out? What kind of went through, through your mind then in the next, I guess, 30 seconds of madness and, and mayhem down there? Yeah, you know, it was funny. Uh, we had a coach's spat in the middle of the game about when fly balls go up in the air, things different people say and, and reading it, you know, they're guessing on the ball. And it was lighthearted. But again, Frank speaks rather bluntly. There was, um, fortunately, it wasn't Sunday. There was some foul language and we were basically teasing each other. Um, you know, sometimes you feel, you know, I've watched a lot of games. You kind of have a good feel for where the ball is going to end up. With that one, I just thought it had a chance to go out. Um, but since Fergie's gotten back to, again, kind of being himself, he's got that flick in there, um, you know, where there's a little more to it, and he got it pretty good. Um, so it went over the fence by however many feet, and uh, I think everyone reacted uh, as if they were, you know, six years old, uh, coaches included. But, you know, in a moment like that, you, you might as well enjoy it. All of us spend so many dang hours in the office and at the field. And regardless of what team it is across the country, uh, I think you got to enjoy something like that. And then, unfortunately, it, you eventually got to move on. Be nice if it was football this week. You could sit on it for a week. But uh, obviously, there's a, a competition tomorrow awaits. We'll take two more guys. We'll go uh, Ryan and Ben to finish off. I felt like y'all couldn't get a whole lot offensively after Arkansas went to the bullpen. Just how crucial were those two solo home runs y'all got to kind of keep you in striking distance? Yeah, just to give the guy something. I mean, Max hit that first one and he came back in the dugout and he said, um, this thing's not over yet. And those, again, emotions were kind of coming out of him. And part of me wanted to say, well, yeah, it's only the, the seventh inning. Of course, it's not over yet. But, all, you know, what he meant was, you know, we kind of needed to get back in the fight. I think if our guys are guilty of anything this series, um, it, it's when we get a punch in the gut. Maybe there's a little bit too much of deflation uh, you, you know, going on in, in the dugout and amongst our guys. So I think that was more of a rallying cry of let's get back to playing. Um, we've learned a harsh lesson and a positive lesson throughout the year a million times. It seems like this, the game kind of can be in chunks, you know, call it thirds or one inning or whatever, but um, all nine innings are going to be what makes up the results. So uh, hopefully, by tomorrow, the, the emotions are under control and, and you just play for nine innings and often it's extra innings either with our team or with Sundays, um, but they're all going to be included in the end result. So you might as well just keep playing ball the whole time. 
Tony, just how big were those two innings from Redmond? Um, maybe had some unfortunate luck and some miscommunication uh, with, with the first baseman on a couple of those bump plays. But how, how big were those two innings for him to labor through and, and somewhat limit the damage? Yeah, I mean, it, it didn't look good to the, the bystander just watching that deal um, that we weren't able to do something. But I think Colin Smith caught everybody surprise by surprise by bringing that thing with him. And the only thing that should have happened different was Kirby needed to go to the base. Um, you know, he didn't seem like himself after that ball hit off his bare hand. He lets that thing go. And, you know, there's two out, two quick outs in the inning. Fergie makes that play. Um, but for whatever reason, that kind of got him off course a little bit and he should have covered the base. But otherwise, um, one, one count with Webb executed that thing perfectly. Um, even if Kirby goes to the base, even if we talk a little better, I don't know if we get an out there. I mean, we need to, um, but it would be it, it'll be interesting to kind of watch the overhead and see what adjustment we need to make. But Redmond, you know, has a way of limiting damage and uh, a way of finding his way in games that we win. And uh, it's a comforting, you know, sight to see him out there and comforting fact to have him available in the bullpen. And I think like some of their guys um, and our guys today, uh, there'll be some guys that'll be recycled in this series. Thanks, Coach. Thank you all. Take it easy.